Section 1. Introduction. Imagine your phone moving up to your eyes. You wear a pair of glasses. The screen is there, right in front of you. You no longer need to pull a phone from your pocket. You just look, and you can see your messages. You see maps overlaid on the street. You see videos floating in the air. This idea might sound like science fiction from a movie, but this technology is closer than you might think. Welcome to Future Toolkit, your guide to AI, technology, and future innovations. Today, how smart glasses could replace smartphones. It is called smart glasses. It could completely change how we use computers and interact with the world every single day. This essay is your simple guide to this exciting new technology. We will explore what smart glasses are. We will explain how they work. We will look at the amazing things they might let us do. We will also talk about the big problems that need to be solved. This is not about confusing technical details. It is about the big idea. It is about what it would feel like to have information seamlessly blended into your vision. Get ready to learn about the potential replacement for the smartphone that currently rules our lives. Think about the first time you used a smartphone. It felt like magic, did not it? A tiny computer in your hand that could do almost anything. Smart glasses aim to create that feeling all over again, but in a new way. They want to make technology feel less like a tool you hold and more like a part of you. They want to free your hands and your attention. Instead of looking down at a small screen, you will be looking up and out at the world, with helpful information right where you need it. So, um, let us begin this journey. We will break down this big topic into small, easy pieces. You will see examples from everyday life. You will understand the good parts and the bad parts. By the end, you will have a clear picture of what smart glasses are. You will be able to imagine a future where your most important device is not in your pocket, but sitting comfortably on your face, showing you a new way to see everything. Section 2. The problem with our pockets. Today, the smartphone is the king of our digital lives. It is a powerful little rectangle that we carry everywhere. We use it for calls, for navigating new cities, for taking pictures of our food, for shopping, banking, connecting with friends on social media. The smartphone is incredibly useful. It has put the power of a supercomputer into billions of pockets around the globe. It is hard to imagine life without it. But for all its power, the smartphone also has some big problems. Think about how you use your phone. You are constantly looking down at it. This posture can cause neck pain, often called text neck. When we are focused on our screens, we miss the world around us. We might miss a beautiful sunset. We might miss a friendly smile from a stranger. We might even walk into a lamppost because we are not paying attention. Our phones demand that we disconnect from our physical surroundings to connect with our digital ones. This creates a constant tug of war for our attention. Uh, another problem is how we access information. Let us say you are cooking and need to check a recipe. You have to wash your hands, pick up your phone, unlock it, find the app, and scroll to the right step. This process can be slow and clumsy. What if you are carrying groceries and need to answer a call? You have to juggle bags to get your phone out. These small interruptions add up. They break our flow and make simple tasks more complicated than they need to be. Our hands are always tied to this one device. The smartphone can also be socially awkward. Imagine you are having a conversation with a friend. A notification buzzes on your phone. You feel the urge to check it. Even if you resist, your attention is partly gone. If you do check it, you send a clear message. This little screen is more important than our conversation right now. Phones can build walls between people, even when they are sitting in the same room. They are designed to pull us away from the present moment, rather than helping us be more engaged with it. Section 3. What are smart glasses really? So what exactly are these smart glasses that promise to solve our phone problems? At their simplest, a tiny computer. A small display built into the frame. They look like regular eyeglasses or sunglasses. They can show digital info in your field of vision. The goal, so light and stylish you would wear them all day. Not like bulky VR headsets that block the world, smart glasses add to your world, not replace it. How do they work? Most use a tiny projector. That projector shines a small image onto a special lens. Your brain sees the image as if it is floating a few feet in front of you. Others might use a tiny transparent screen, visual, diagram of a tiny projector inside the arm beaming an image onto the lens. The glasses also contain a tiny computer, a battery, a microphone for voice commands, and often a camera to see what you see. They connect via Wi-Fi or by linking to your phone. The real magic. Augmented reality, or AR. AR means mixing digital things with the real world. Simple example, a text message in the corner of your vision. 
Advanced example. A 3D arrow on the sidewalk showing your turn. You would control the glasses in simple ways. You might speak a command, like take a picture, or show me the weather. You could also use a small touchpad on the side of the frame, swiping to scroll through notifications. Some might track your eye movements or let you use small hand gestures. The idea, quick, easy, hands-free interaction. Get info without stopping to pull out a device. Let us imagine what a typical day with smart glasses might look like. You wake up and put on your glasses. As you look at your closet, a small icon appears showing today's weather. Sunny with a high of 75 degrees. You decide to wear a t-shirt. While you make your coffee, a quiet notification floats in your view. It is a good morning message from your mom. You can whisper a reply without touching anything. Now it is time to go to work. You decide to walk to a new coffee shop. You say, hey glasses, give me walking directions to the daily grind. Instantly, a glowing blue line appears on the sidewalk in front of you. Arrows show you exactly where to turn at the next corner. You never have to look down at a map on your phone. Your head is up and you are aware of cars, cyclists, and other people. This makes your walk safer and more enjoyable. You can actually look at the city around you. At work, you are a mechanic trying to fix a complex engine. You're not sure which part is which. Your smart glasses bring up a three-dimensional diagram and overlay it directly onto the engine. It highlights the exact bolt you need to unscrew. An expert from another city can see what you see through your glasses camera. They can draw a circle in your vision pointing to the problem area. You can do your job faster with fewer mistakes and without juggling a dirty tablet or manual. Later you meet a friend for dinner. You're terrible with names. But as you see an acquaintance from a party last year, the glasses gently display their name, David, just above their head. You can greet them confidently. During dinner, you get an important alert about your flight tomorrow. It appears discreetly in your view, without you having to pull out your phone and interrupt the conversation. You can stay present with your friend while still being connected. Your technology is now helping your social life instead of hurting it. While the future of smart glasses sounds amazing, there are many big challenges to overcome. These are not small problems, they are major hurdles that companies must clear before smart glasses can replace our phones. The first and most obvious one is style, light, comfortable, fashionable. They need to look like normal glasses that people are already proud to wear. Making technology this small and attractive is very, very difficult. Another huge problem is battery life. The projector, the computer, the camera, the wireless connection needs power. But the battery has to be tiny to fit into a glasses frame. Right now, most smart glasses can only last for a few hours of active use. Nobody wants their glasses to die in the middle of the day. For smart glasses to become our main device, they will need to last from morning until night on a single charge. This requires a major breakthrough in battery technology. Then there is the giant issue of privacy. This is a concern for both the wearer and the people around them. If your glasses have a camera that is always on, what does that mean? People might feel uncomfortable knowing they could be recorded at any moment without their permission. This could lead to new laws and social rules. For the wearer, what happens to all the data your glasses collect about what you see and do all day? Companies will need to be very clear and trustworthy about how they protect our personal information. Finally, the cost and performance must be right. The first models of new technology are always very expensive. For smart glasses to be used by everyone, they need to become affordable. At the same time, they need to work really well. The display must be bright, easy to see, even in sunlight. The software must be fast, smart, and not crash. If the glasses are slow, buggy, or hard to use, people will just go back to their reliable phones. Solving all these problems at once, style, battery, privacy, and price, is the ultimate challenge. Smart glasses will not replace smartphones overnight. It will be a slow and gradual process, much like how smartphones slowly replaced older cell phones. For a while, the two devices will likely work together. Your phone might stay in your pocket or bag, acting as the powerful brain. It will do the heavy computing and provide the internet connection. Your smart glasses will act as the display, showing you notifications and simple info passed from your phone. This is how many smartwatches work today. Think of it as a team. The phone is the strong, powerful player. The glasses are the fast, agile player. This partnership makes sense in the beginning. It lets companies make the glasses lighter and cheaper because they do not need a massive computer inside. You would use your glasses for quick tasks, checking messages, seeing directions, taking a quick photo. 
you would still pull out your phone for typing a long email or browsing the web. Over time, the glasses will become more powerful and independent. Computers inside them will get smaller and faster. Batteries will last longer. Internet connections will be built directly into the glasses. Then glasses will handle more phone-like tasks. Apps will be designed for the hands-free AR experience, not for a small touchscreen. In this essay, we have explored the exciting world of smart glasses. We started by imagining a future where our screens are no longer in our hands but in our line of sight. We saw that while our smartphones are amazing, they have problems. They make us look down, tie up our hands, and can interrupt our lives. Smart glasses offer a potential solution. They promise a hands-free, faster, and more natural way to interact with technology. They can blend digital information with our real world through augmented reality, helping us with everything from navigation to work. However, the road ahead is filled with challenges, style, comfort, battery, privacy, and price. The shift will be slow, with glasses first working alongside our phones before they can stand on their own. The journey from the smartphone to smart glasses is a classic story of technological evolution. Smart glasses offer a vision of the future where information supports our lives without pulling us out of them. What would you want to see through that window? Imagine one clear, useful thing you would have your smart glasses do every day. Tell us in the comments, like this video, and subscribe to Future Toolkit for more on AI and future tech.